So the uh, parking meter deal in Chicago has been the subject of much um, debate, especially amongst progressives across the country. I think I get probably an email a day, um, and I have for the last you know while, about the debacle that a lot of people consider Chicago to be. Um, there's, I'm just wondering if you've seen the Inspector General report. The, the parking media deal is not on the table and it's not before you today. No, no, no. And it's not, it's not something, the mayor has only recommended that the parking media deal be assessed. He hasn't, there's no specific proposal. That, that aside, we have. We are aware of everything that's going on in Chicago and we intend to take full advantage of everything they've done wrong to not do it that way. Yeah. You, you let me finish my question. Um, I had some specifics about the, Things that are raised in the inspector, I just wanted to make sure you had looked at that because some of the things that were raised in that agreement had to do with the nature of the deal. And uh, for example, agreeing to compensate the company for when street closures happen, say there's an earthquake and our, and our parking structure is closed. You know, are we responsible? There, there, there were a lot of things that were done. If we're, if we're looking at modeling this deal on the idea there, um, I just want to make sure you had reviewed that. There's also a CalPERG report uh, that's highly critical of the, the Chicago deals. Just wanted to make sure that you had seen those. Of course. We have. Okay. It's the blueprint of what not to do. Right. Okay. Great. That's all I was yeah. asking. <laughs> um, I have one final question okay. as soon as you're through. You oh, okay. Sure. Uh, I have a couple more Go questions. Ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so I was involved when this original deal was negotiated. Um, and have over the years been, been repeatedly contacted by the, the Teamsters Union and the workers that operate parking concept, that workers that operate. So I know that, as you had mentioned, unlike other parking structures, this is entirely contracted out right now, the operation. So in the board memo, I mean, and it's, it, it kind of goes to the logic of this. The only way that this is going to be profitable for an outside company to give us a whole bunch of money up front, you know, is if either we reduce rev we reduce costs, or we increase revenues, or a combination of both, and both of those options seem problematic to me. So I just want to lay out my concerns about that um, from my long experience with this particular project. Um, right now, they. The cost, and I'm also a frequent user because I think the ArcLight is one of the greatest things we've done it in is. Hollywood, and you it know is. I'm always happy to see it so crowded. I love the cooking school. I want to go there some, you know, do it. So I think it's a really great. Uh, it's something great we've done in Hollywood. Um, the the number of workers that we've increasingly automated over the years, um, and we recently automated more. So the number of employees has been cut to the bare raw minimum. And I know each time the contract comes up for negotiation, there's been um, complaints about lack of hours, lack of full-time jobs. Um, and then the, the, the wages are at bare minimum wage, I mean bare living wage. So they're about $10 an hour plus benefits. So how could we possibly find a way to reduce costs lower than that is my, just a question, it's more like a rhetorical question. You don't know yet. Um, so it makes it really, I mean, unless you do have thoughts about how to reduce costs. Um, and, then, and then in terms of, of increasing prices, uh, there's so many things that, that triggers because, so, you know, the deal is really contingent on our partnership with Pacific Theaters. And the, the parking, the cost of parking there is crucial, key element to our business plan there. Um, as well as for the Academy, potential Academy Award Museum, um, and the new tenants we finally managed to attract to get in there. So if we, you know, every time we talk about raising parking rates there, even a nickel, we get a huge turnout of opposition um, from, from Pacific Theaters, from the employees, um, you know, from community representatives. So it seems to me, in terms of the reducing costs and raising revenues, we are incredibly constrained. Um, so I'm just wondering how, is there, is there a, like a, a vision out there for like the magic potion that's gonna let us see more revenue here than appears to me? 
a couple of things. Number one, remember that this is part of a package of 10 structures that the city is presenting. And so the primary economy of scale that a concessionaire will seek is the management of 10 structures does not require 10 supervisors or 10 executives. Uh, so there are economies of scale there. In fact, the reports that the CLA and the, C the CAO have released uh, include 500 pages of consultant study that the council has paid for, uh, conducted by Desmond and Associates, a leading parking contractor. Uh, and, and I think his conclusion was exactly uh, your conclusion, Commissioner, which was that at, at the Arclight facility in particular, there are no uh, job cuts to be had. It's, it's efficiently run, and, and uh, anybody coming in would staff it at the current levels. That is not the case at other structures where we have not yet adopted the kiosks that pay before you go to the ex exit system, which, as you know, you have at Arclight. The other thing I'd like to remind you is that you know, there is a capital cost involved in, in, in continuing to own these structures. So, so really, in part, again, less of an issue for you because you have resources, but from the city's perspective, continuing to fund the capital upgrades, for example, the cost of this turnstile equipment is very significant. There's no place to fund that at the city except out of the same budget that pays for upkeep of city buildings, uh, 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 staff for other uses, et cetera, et cetera. So it's just an unfortunate uh, challenge of choosing where you need to concentrate your resources. So I, I guess the, and then on the issue about rates, uh, I, I would just ask you to take me at my word that we understand your programmatic, programmatic objectives and the good news is you'll be the final judge when we come back to you after the discussions that lie ahead. Okay. And then just one thing I'd just ask you to take into consideration. I think I can just say this, you know, we're involved in a lawsuit right now uh, against the state for taking for the take that was recently done yes. of redevelopment revenues and very familiar with redevelopment law and the issues of expenditure redevelopment funds outside of redevelopment areas by not not by the agency it seems like that is a really significant legal issue that we need to address as we go forward so i just wanted to make I sure the, i think our expectation is that you get fair market value for the asset so so i don't i think that there's not a question it's not an issue of of subsidizing the general fund in some way i i, I believe at least that's been our conceptual approach that, in, that with staff. Be, that would be a deal breaker. Yeah, it should be. Yeah. And not to mention illegal. Right. <laughs> I just want to make sure that that's, that that's well briefed, that it's well briefed, because it seems like, it, you know, it's, it's a little bit messy. And so it just is. make sure that we really deal with that, because having seen so much litigation over the years on this point. Commissioners, we have before us a recommendation that we enter negotiations with the City of Los Angeles to explore whether the conveyance of this parking facility makes sense. Uh, a motion to adopt or accept that recommendation would be in order. Do I have no motion? I have no motion. Where do we go from here? Well, then you've got no action uh, pending on this item. Uh, you can uh, bring it back. Uh, you can make a motion to continue it. Um, actually, staff can bring it back on their own to you. Does uh, staff have the ability to negotiate this on their own without direction from the commission? Well, actually, they, they probably do have the ability to continue negotiations with the city unless you make uh, a motion or direct them not to negotiate with the city on this. Typically, the way the projects come to the, uh, come to the board is after they've already been negotiated and they're seeking approval from the board. This, on this occasion, I think the staff wanted to alert you that these negotiations were happening and to get some direction from you. Um, but typically, staff does not need authority from the board to negotiate, to just negotiate deals. Speaking only from the chair's perspective, I think what we have before us is an issue that we need more information. I, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable looking at this project and at this proposal, but I really would like to see some of the numbers. I'd like to see a side-by-side -side comparative of what we are looking at uh, in our current situation and what that trend looks like versus what it would look like if indeed we um, sold the asset or, or negotiated the asset for a better or a different package. Uh, some very 
interesting and critical points have been raised today. I think those need to be addressed as part of this process. Uh, it would be my request that we bring this back at a future agenda date or at a future commission meeting, agendize it again, and have a full report on this before we take any action on it. 